Hey -o. it's Omni Dog here. How's it going, Omni Dogs and Omni Kittens? Here with an overview and a review of my most anticipated omnibus of 2020. One, because I never thought it would come out. <laughs> I thought for sure they were going to cancel this thing. This is DC. The Spectre is a character born in the 40s in the Golden Age. And he uh, was, let me adjust the camera here a little bit. He was pretty much the vengeance of God. The vengeance of God spoke through the Spectre and would, um, in the original Spectre comics, uh, the Spectre would give them gruesome deaths. And ev eventually the Spectre became sort of a dumb cartoony uh, character and they just sort of forgot about him for a while. Uh, I have a, a DC archives of him that has a lot of his old golden age stories in there. So right around 1967, they brought him back. And uh, first let's take a look because interestingly, I believe, is this a flat spine or not? This spine looks kind of flat to me, but then when I look at it like this, it looks sort of curved to me. Hmm. But when you look at it like this, it looks flat. Uh, either way, I don't think it matters because if you open it right up, there's really no gutter loss. Let's get this on here. There we go. There's no gutter loss. Let me get it where it sits by itself. So you can see it's really okay. There's white borders right here in the middle. So whether it's a flat spine or not, uh, I, I think it's okay. And it's um, not a black, not a black uh, book, but it has uh, some color in it. It's got Wrath of the Spectre. Uh-oh, these guys look like they're having a bad day. Yeah. All right, let's take this cover off. Since Kristen, my co-host on the Omni Dog and Omni Cat show, is always getting on me about reading my books with the dust cover on. Yes, sometimes I do that. Sorry. This book has a beautiful table of contents. And it starts out... <clears throat> they brought Spectre back in 1966. And... Um, through Showcase number 60, Showcase 61 and 64, Brave and Bold 72, uh, Brave and Bold 75, and it got enough in January 1968, they got enough interest that uh, they gave him his own series here, 1 through 10, and let's see, 1... Uh, was drawn by Murphy Anderson, written by Gardner Fox, 2... Um, written by Gardner Fox, written by, uh, sorry, drawn by Neil Adams, uh, three, four, five, three, four, and five were drawn by Neil Adams. And then the inker on number seven was Murphy Anderson on top of Jerry Grandinetti. Jerry Grandinetti, God bless you. Rest in peace. You were not my favorite silver age artist but you had murphy anderson ink so that probably saved the whole thing in my opinion um and then uh his time ran out with issue 10 in 1969 then he was brought back in 1974 with uh jim Aparo on uh the art and michael fleischer writing for approximately 10 issues. Let's count. How about it? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten issues. And then what this book collects, it got it got canceled. Adventure Comics number 440 in July of 75, well into the Bronze Age. Uh, it got canceled and there were some unfinished stories that Jim Aparo had already inked that Mike Fleischer had written. And these are collected in this 
uh, book, which is really cool. And then there are random appearances, whoops, just knocked the camera, random appearances uh, through the 80s uh, that he um, did that are pretty good to okay and reasonably interesting. I mean, here's Ross Andrew uh, doing the art with Mike Barr. That's uh, doing the writing. That's not bad. Here's Brave and Bold with Michael Fleischer and Jim Apero on art. So let's take a look. This is a extremely cool cover. There was the showcase. And I have that in a safe deposit box somewhere. Um, and here is Murphy Anderson art. And this is um, going to appeal to the Silver Age people out there. Because this is extremely clean, brilliantly colored, beautiful art. And it's a typical Gardner Fox story. Um, it's, it's kind of a cosmic science fiction event to it all. Um, and I, I can't tell you modern readers that you're going to enjoy the Silver Age book. If there was a Silver Age book... For you modern age readers to enjoy, it's this one. Legion of Superheroes, not so much. That's pretty silly. Uh, some of the early Superman and Batman, pretty silly. Spectre kind of kicks ass from the very beginning, even though he's dealing with demons and stuff. Here's more Murphy Anderson art. Uh, even though he's dealing with otherworldly demons, um, the art is really beautiful. Um, and... It's uh, it's interesting science fiction. So I think you're you can um, you can kind of hang your hat on that. Uh, and here is another really good cover. Showcase number sixty four, the Ghost of Ace Chance. These covers are just some of my favorites. I think this is Murphy Anderson again. Yeah, Mur Murphy Anderson. So you. Worst case, you get great Murphy Anderson art and you get some fun science fiction courtesy of Gardner Fox, who uh, wrote a lot of famous Silver Age uh, stories like Flash and things like that. So um, you can't if you're a modern age reader, this stuff is at least fun. Now I have this book and <laughs> of course I forgot to bring it in because I have it on my comic rack out there. Um, but I do have this book, and this is art by uh, Carmine Infantino, and let's see, who's his inker here? I know he did the, uh, let's see. Well, there's Infantino, and Kudera did the ink. So Kudera um, was the inker, and this is a classic cover. Infantino and Anderson, you don't get much better Silver Age than this cover. Um, so this is another great story, another um, story of cosmic proportions. He was more of a cosmic Avenger early in his career. Um, here's some, wa there's a wacky Batman brave and bold story, which is kind of goofy. Um, but then he got his own magazine. And if you find this in good condition... You should be happy because look at the black around here. This is a this is a book that lots of people like, lots of Silver Age fans or just comic fans like to find in good condition or I'm you know you know what I mean, very fine plus condition because of this black solid black, and this is uh, the first issue, and he deals with uh, you know some more sort of outer outer spacey cosmic adventures which are still fun and here's whoops that was specter one and here we get neil Fo neil fox neil adams taking over the artwork um unretouched unrestored unrecolored neil adams and you get him for i think four issues two three four five two three four five i think we'll we'll check but uh here you get some Neil Adams, and this is some of his earlier work. At the same time, he was doing things for World's Finest, uh, things of that nature. 
mostly world's finest like in 68 so let's see when this was this is also 68 so yeah this is early neil adams when he was first drawing at dc he was doing dead man around this time too and world's finest so here um you've got this the specter working with jim corgan they are separate at certain places Certain times you can't separate them. Certain times in Spectre's history. Jim Corrigan is his uh, earthbound host. Um, and Spectre, sometimes sometimes it's just the Spectre, and sometimes it's the Spectre leaving Jim Corrigan's body. So this is one of those instances where they're separated in this particular run. So here we've got some more Neil Adams. And... This is a really great one with um, Wildcat. And I think this might be the first one that Neil Adams wrote. Let's see. But this is, uh, this is a Neil Adams as he is supposed to look back then. Let's see, what page is this? 187? Did he write this? I'm pretty sure he did. Let's see. No, Mike Frederick did. Number four is where Adams wrote a couple issues. Okay. So here we have beautiful Neil Adams artwork. Nice Silver Age colors. Wildcat, a little callback to the Golden Age, which I always thought was cool. A slow Wildcat, but still Wildcat. And then this is my favorite cover, I think, ever of all time with <laughs> Stop That Kid Before He Wrecks the World with Spectre um, duking it out with this dude while this kid who's uh, possessed is uh, dealing with uh, wrecking Earth. And Jim Corrigan and the Spectre help uh, the kid out. And you can see some of the 60s influence of the colors and backgrounds going on uh, here's some more so neil adams and remember he's supposed to be the vengeance um of god god's vengeance so he hasn't been doing too much avenging. I mean, he's been doing avenging, but it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's just regular vengeance. Here's story and art by Neil Adams. Um, as far as Neil Adams goes, his Dead Man and Spectre stories were pretty good. Were actually interesting, um, as opposed to his Batman's uh, stuff. Um, back in his early career, when he was a young man, late 60s, early, early, early 70s, he could write a basically decent comic book story, which is some of these are. And you get uh, his fantastic art. Here's a big splash page of a T-Rex. Um, and then he, uh, Spectre goes on for a few issues. I, I will say there... It, Interesting, but ultimately kind of forgettable. Spectres, uh, Spectre 7 through 10. They're okay. Um, they're not as exciting as the earlier ones. They suffer from a little bit of um, art that I'm not really that excited about. But fortunately, that doesn't last long. Because... The event we're all here for is Michael Fleischer and Jim Aparo. After the Neil Adams stuff, this is the stuff you want to see. Look at these cool... He takes over in Adventure Comics. This is about 1974. Fleischer would... And they called, they called it Art Continuity down here with Russell Carley, who would map the thing out, and then Jim Aparo would go in and finish it up for mo the most part. Um, no, Fleischer... Fleischer, this was a wrathful specter. 
if you crossed somebody and killed somebody, um, Spectre was going to see to your demise and not in a pleasant way. Here we go right here. He's melting the bad guy away. First his gun, then he starts to melt, and he's a puddle of melted dude right there. Uh, farewell murderer. So this guy's got a girl right here on a plane. He skins him alive and leaves him as a pile of bones. So we've discovered now that not only is Jim Aparo a great artist, but that Michael Fleischer is returning to the roots of the Spectre as he was back in the 40s as a really vengeful uh, spirit of the Lord who is making you pay for your crimes. So let's see another cup. Now it only ran 10 issues here. Giant scissors. Give the guy the, the heave ho. And this woman who headed the crime turns old, like on stage, just boom, loses her beauty, loses everything. And this is his love interest, but he can't have her because he's the specter and everything. And then it turns into weird adventures. And I, these were great. I loved these as a teenager. I was probably about 15 years old. And these were great because um, he, was, he was vengeful. He, these, these people were paying for their crimes. And I probably don't want to show too much more because... Uh, of these of these particular crimes, I mean these particular vengeful acts, because I, I think you should experience them for yourself. Now, modern age readers, I think you can get into this. This is some really cool stuff. So I I think of all the Silver Age books that I've done an overview on, this is the one you can probably, if you're a modern age reader, um, you this is a Silver Age book you can get behind, and read and enjoy. Um, so <laughs> this guy was sliced and diced. I don't want to show any more because it really, um, it, it, I, it would ruin it for, you. I don't want to spoil it for you anymore. Um, I will say if you'll notice this guy, he's a reporter that is on the trail, uh, in the last few issues of Fleischer's run. Um, and he's on the trail of, these um these bad guys and he looks just like clark kent but it's not his his name is somebody crawford er earl crawford but he looks just like Cra uh, clark kent and i always thought it was kind of weird um but these are good stories um the, the michael fleischer ones were uh very good stories then we have i think a brave and bold which was probably written by bob haney Bob Haney, art by Jim Aparo. This is when it became 60 cents. Um, and he's still very, even though it's Bob Haney, it's still pretty interesting. Um, weird Adventure. As long as it says Weird Adventure, you've got Michael Fleischer in there. But the other thing is, is you've got those kind of, yeah, see, now this is totally Clark Kent. What's going on here? Why is he Earl Crawford? And what's with making him look exactly like Clark Kent? Um, so he, um, this uh, omnibus allows for the collection. It was, it was a loose uh, floppy that had, I don't think it had been collected before of Michael Fleischer's final issues. He took, got taken off after 10 issues of it in the mid 70s, early to mid 70s. Um, I'm going to say it was probably around 74 when he was taken off. We, um, it's in the table of contents, so you can you can be sure about that. Um, Carmine Infantino, fabulous artist, not a good publisher. Uh, that was a bad decision to take Michael Fleischer off because um, it, it, it made the Spectre interesting and it fell within the comics code authority. There's there the seal of approval was on all these books, and so there was nothing going on that bothered uh, people, uh, fellow creators, and the comic book community were talking about it. 
Um, and there was a whole lawsuit between Harlan Ellison and the Comics Journal and Michael Fleischer because of um, Harlan Ellison was trying to compliment Fleischer in the Comics Journal, saying he was the only one whacked out enough uh, with a crazy enough imagination to draw these incredibly gory stories. There's really no blood involved. So I don't, Carmen Infantino, that and this decision to cancel it and to erase the faces of Superman in all the Jack Kirby stuff and have those done by Vince Coletto um, uh, or Coletti. I think it's Coletto, whatever it is. You know what I'm talking about, having Superman's face redrawn from Jack Kirby to uh, another guy because Superman had to look a certain way. Carmen Infantino just did not make good decisions. And so this got canceled. Um, but we get a lot of it in this um we get a lot of the Michael Fleischer stuff and we get a lot of other good Spectre stuff to close out the book. Really interesting stuff that I liked. Um, always good to see Jim Aparo art and even the other artists uh, that aren't Jim Aparo <laughs> are still pretty darn good. So I think that if you're interested at all as a modern reader, to try a Silver Age book, this is the book for you. And of course, if you are a Silver Age reader or a Bronze Age reader, you already know this is the book for you. Uh, so I advise you to get it. How much is this? This is $125. Well, try and find it someplace cheap. Um, this is a fantastic book. I love everything about it. It is so fun, so interesting, and just what comics were capable of back then. Uh, I urge everyone out there to give this a try uh, and let me know what you think. It's a wonderful book, a wonderful character, really taken to um, sort of, not the limits, but past the limits of what the comics were in the day. It, it's a character that finally saw his full um, capabilities and possibilities um, were were uh, finally seen. Uh, potential, that's the word I'm looking for. The Spectre's potential is finally achieved. And that's a good place for me to stop because I'm hard, having a hard time coming up with words. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please feel free to leave a comment, leave a like, please subscribe. And peace and love, peace and love. This has been Omni Dog.